Hello, welcome to this new lecture of Math S401, Dynamic Optimization. Today is going to be uh, probably a shorter lecture uh, where we're going to see one example of a dynamic optimization uh, problem. And in particular, we're going to look at uh, what we call an optimal stopping problem. And for the problem, I took the example of a tree. So this is a tree growth uh, problem. So consider the following uh, setting. Okay, so uh, there's a tree somewhere. Okay, right, so this is my tree and I have to decide whether to cut the tree or not. Okay, so if I cut the tree, I have some advantage because I can sell, uh, for example, the wood. Okay, uh, if I wait, I also have an advantage because tomorrow the tree will be bigger than today. Okay, so you have to uh, compare the cost of waiting, right? Basically, if I don't wait, I can sell the, the tree now uh, versus the benefit of waiting, which is that the tree will grow bigger so you can sell more tomorrow, right? So it's basically selling today versus waiting and selling something more tomorrow. Okay, so let's, from, uh, let's formalize this. So let's assume that I have a tree and the tree has a height that let me uh, denote this by K. It's like a, a stock of capital. Okay, so this is the height of the tree. Okay, so every day I can make a decision. So if the tree has height k, I can either sell it or I can wait. Okay, so that's basically uh, what I have to do. And if I sell it, well, <clears throat> then the price at which I can sell it or the value at which I can sell it, we'll assume it's just proportional to k. Right, if uh, the tree doubles in height, I can sell twice as much. Okay, so it's like the price per unit of tree times k, and then for simplicity, we just put uh, the price equal to one. Right, so basically, you can normalize uh, the price to one, so the value of selling the tree will just be equal to the height. Okay, so that's um, the value of selling the tree. Then, if I wait, what's going to happen? Well, Basically, I have to wait, so I have a cost of waiting, so there will be a discount rate here. And then tomorrow, I assume that the tree is going to be bigger. So how do I, uh, can you model this? Well, basically, you can say, okay, I have a function h that takes a number in r plus and produces a number in r plus, such that if k is the height of the tree today, then hk is the height of tree tomorrow. Okay, so basically it's a law of motion that you can say the tomorrow, what will be the height? Well, it will be h of kt, okay? So I have to wait, I pay a cost of beta, right? I uh, have a tree of h k, and then I again have to decide tomorrow whether to sell I have h of k or I have to wait, then again I have a cost of beta and then my tree will grow again so it will be h of h of k and so on. Okay, so this is basically uh, my problem. So how can you model this? Well, um, you can write down the Bellman equation, okay, or the Bellman operator. Let's try to, to write down the Bellman equation. So what's the value of a tree of height uh, k? Well, the value will be equal to the maximum of two things. Well, either I sell it and I have a value or I wait and then I have a value and it will be the maximum of these two things, right? Because I take the optimal action. Okay, so I maximize two things. Well, I take the maximum of either selling or waiting. So if I sell, my value will be k, okay, by assumption, the price is equal to 1. And if I wait, well, I have to discount by rate beta, and then I have a tree of h, hk, and then I have to say what's the value of this. Well, by the Bellman equation, the value of the tree tomorrow will then be equal to v of h of k, okay? So this is the, the same function v, right? 
If I wait till tomorrow, I play the cards beta, and then I'm facing faced basically with the same problem as before, right? But now the tree is h of k instead of uh, k. Okay, so this is the Bellman equation. Now the problem uh, that you need to solve is how does this v look like? So um, what you can do, for example, you can specify some function h, you can specify your parameter beta, and you can plot the function v using a computer as you have seen uh, previously. How do you do this? Well, you just, for example, you have a value function iteration and you just map the operator tv of k, right, the Bellman operator, which is going to be equal to the maximum of k beta v h of k. Okay, you specify some function h, you specify a beta, you start with an arbitrary function v, you iterate this over and over and over again. You can show that this is a contraction mapping, so this would be a good exercise. You can verify Blackman's, uh, Blackwell's conditions on uh, on this function, and you can show that it's contraction mapping, so this will uh, go uh, to the fixed point. And if you would do this, well then for some h functions, and you will specify in a second uh, which ones they are, you will see that you have a graph uh, that looks a bit like this something like this okay so this is here i have uh, k that's the height of the tree zero and here i have v of k which is the balance fixed point so what's the reasoning behind this well if i would draw the 45 degree line it would look something like this so for lower values of k my v of k is above the 45 degree line right so here in this region, I have that v of k is bigger than k. And here in this region, for k, let's say, bigger than k star, I will have that v of k is equal to k, right? The, the value function is equal to the 45 degree line. So if I look at this function here, well, I have that v of k is equal to the maximum of k and something else. So if v of k is bigger than this first argument, which is in this region, well, then it has to be equal to this here, right? So I know in this region, v of k will be equal to beta v of h of k. And if v is equal to the second one, well, then I know that the optimum was at the second argument. So here I have a region where I will wait to cut the tree, right? So if my tree is below k star, there I will wait. In this region, v of k is equal to k. Well, v of k, if it's equal to k, then it means that k is greater or equal to this here. Right? So if k is bigger than this here, then I know it will be optimal to sell, to cut the tree and to sell uh, the wood. So this graph, from this graph, you can easily see that at, in some cases there will be like an optimal strategy. If my tree is below k star, I will wait. If the height of my tree is above k star, then I will uh, cut the tree and so Okay. So let's look at the rule that satisfies this. Okay, so this is my, my policy function, you can say. So this is the rule. So there's some k star, and if k is less than k star or equal, right, this is the, the cutting edge. Let's say less or equal, I will wait. Okay, and if k is uh, bigger than k star, I will uh, cut my tree. So what's the value of k star? Well, at k star, I have to be indifferent uh, between cutting and selling the tree and waiting, right? And if I'm indifferent, then this has to be equal to this, right? Both selling and cutting are equally valuable so i know that at k star i have that k is equal to bv h of k right so here cutting is the same as 
rating. So this is at k star, right? So I can use k star here. So this is a bit problematic because you still have a v here, right? So if you don't know v, what can you say about k star? Well, uh, probably nothing much. However, here th there's a something nice that's happening. So let's assume that this rule holds, right? So th that's uh, an assumption. Well, here we are at k star, and I know that h of k, right? This is the height of the height of the tree. Well, I know that h of k star will be bigger than k star, right? A tree always grows; it cannot uh, go down. So Tomorrow my tree will be bigger than today. So h of k star satisfies this condition here, right? It's bigger than k star. So I know I will cut. Okay. And if I'm going to cut a tree, then I know that v of h of k star, okay, will be equal to the maximum of cutting and selling. I know cutting will be uh, optimal by assumption. Okay. So I know that this is equal to h of k star. Okay. So I can substitute this in here. So I have that k star is equal to beta of h of k star or h of k star divided by k star uh, is equal to one over beta. Okay, so what's this? This is the growth rate of my tree at k star. The, the height tomorrow divided by the height today, right? It's like the growth rate. And this is like the, the rate of, or the cost of waiting. All right, so this shows that at k star, at the point where I'm indifferent between waiting and cutting, the rate of growth of my tree is equal to the cost of waiting, right? So you balance off waiting, because this is the benefit of waiting, right? My tree becomes bigger. And this is the cost of waiting because I'm impatient. Okay, so this is the cost of waiting, and this you can say this is the benefit of waiting. Okay, and this comparison is very important here to determine what is going to be the best thing to do, either waiting or cutting. Okay, so what do you? So if this is an optimal rule, then this here, this rule here, if I know h, I can compute k star, right? This is uh, not a closed form solution, but almost. Uh, I know that if I have this rule, then this is my k star, okay? Now the question is, when will this rule also be optimal? Okay, and this is what we're going to try to answer uh, now. So we're going to make an assumption on the uh, function h, and that's the following. So I will assume that if k is lower or equal to some k star, okay, so this is an assumption, then h of k divided by k, it's for this k here, right, is going to be greater than 1 over uh, beta, greater or equal. Okay. So the growth rate of my tree is going to be bigger than uh, the cost of waiting for small enough trees. And then I'm going to assume that if k is bigger than k star, then h of k divided by k uh, is smaller than 1 over beta. Okay, so if I have here um, k and I here I plot h of k divided by k, right here I have a, a value 1 over beta. So for example, if, if this function is decreasing, well then this will be my k star. Right? For all k smaller than k star, this function here is greater or equal to 1 over beta. For all k bigger than k star, this region here, hk over k is smaller than uh, 1 over beta. Okay, so basically this is satisfied if hk over k is the de decreasing function of k, right? So the growth rate decreases as the tree grows bigger, which is uh, probably a reasonable assumption. I don't know a lot about how trees grow, but I can imagine that uh, this assumption is satisfied. So we're going to show that if this assumption holds, 
then this rule is indeed optimal, right? So it's it's optimal to wait if k is smaller than k star. It's optimal to cut a tree if k is bigger than k star. So let's uh, prove this. So let's first show that if k is smaller than k star, then I'm going to wait. So assume that this assumption uh, holds. So then the theorem says that if k is smaller than k star, then wait. So how do we uh, prove this kind of results? Well, we can go back to a lemma that we have uh, shown, uh, I think, in one of the first lectures. And that's if you have a contraction mapping T, and if you have a, a, a closed set B, and then a set B prime, which is a subset of B, well, then if for all functions V, so this is a set of functions, and this is a subset of functions, right? And T is an operator from functions to functions. Then for every function in this closed set, if T of V is in B star, and if T is a contraction mapping, then the fixed point will be in B star, and B prime, sorry. So that's the lemma. Then the fixed point V is in uh, B prime. Okay, so that's the lemma that I'm referring to. And this is how we can show properties of the uh, value function. So we want to show that the fixed point here will give you a value function that tells you to wait if k is smaller than k star. Okay, so we would like the value function to have the following property that for all k is smaller or equal to k star, uh, it's better to wait. So when will it be better to wait? Well, it will be better to wait if uh, waiting is gives you a higher payoff uh, than selling. So if I sell, I have k. If I wait, I have b, v, h, k. So I want to show that for all k smaller than k star, k is smaller than b, v, h of k. Okay. <clears throat> then it will be optimal to wait. So this is what I want to show. And I want to show this for the for the fixed point. So what I will do, I will show that I will take b to be my set of all uh, functions, and I will take my, which is closed, and I will take b prime to be the set of all functions that satisfy this condition. Okay, so I set b prime to be equal to all the value functions or all the functions that satisfy that for all k smaller or equal to k star k is smaller or equal to beta v h of k okay so what i need to do i need to show that for every v and v and b here is my set of all functions right so i have to show that for every function t of v is in the set right so i need to show that for all v t v is in uh, b prime okay so in particular i have to show that for all v this assumption is satisfied for tv okay so k is smaller or equal to b of tv of a, not ax but ak Okay, and this is uh, what we're going to show now. So we're going to start with here, and I'll show that it's greater or equal to this. So let's start with B of TV of HK. Now TV, I know this is a Bellman operator. So I know that this is equal to, and this is equal to the maximum of two things. What's the first thing? Well, <clears throat> here I have a tree of uh, size H of K. So if I sell, I get h of k. If I wait, I have I have to wait for a period. I have v and then h of the height of my tree. So this is h of h of k. Now I have to count the, the brackets. There's one more, I guess. Okay, so this is seems like a daunting expression, but just substitute h of k of k by another number, and you will see that uh, this is correct. 
Now the maximum of two things is always greater or equal to one of those things, right? So I know that this is greater or equal to beta times h of k. And well, I have to show that this is true for all k smaller or equal to k star. Okay, that's what I forgot, right? I only have to show it for k smaller than k star. And if k is smaller than k star, well, then beta times beta times h of k, if I take beta to the other side, this is greater or equal to k. So I know that this is greater or equal to k. So I have shown indeed that beta tv h of k is greater or equal to k. Okay, so at least I have to show that if this assumption is satisfied, then it's better to wait if k is smaller than k star. Now I still need to show that if k is bigger than k star, then I will uh, cut the tree. So the proof will be very similar to the previous one. So I will have a set, or it will use the same lemma. So I will have a set B and a set uh, B prime, and B prime will be the set of the desired functions. So there's all the functions such that for all k bigger than k star, it will be optimal to cut the tree. And if it's optimal to cut the tree, this means that k is greater than beta v of h of k. Okay, so we need a closed set that maps to this one. That's uh, the ID. So as a closed set, we will take something very similar, except that we will change the strict inequalities to weak inequalities. So it's all the functions v such that for all k greater or equal to k star, k is greater or equal to beta v hk. Okay, and this is a closed set. If I take a sequence of functions in the set, then the limit, if the sequence converges, then the limit will also satisfy these conditions, so there uh, will also be in the set. Okay, so take a function v and b. We need to show that t of v is in b prime. So in particular, we need to show that for all k greater than k star, k is bigger than beta, so here tv is in b prime, so tv of h of k. Okay, so we're going to start with the left-hand side, use the property that b is in, uh, v is in b, and then try to get this uh, smaller than k. So b beta of tv of hk. So we just use the definition of the uh, mapping t. So this is beta times the maximum of two things. The first one is hk and the second one is uh, beta v of h of h of k. Okay, and now again computing number of brackets, uh, something like this. So v is in b, right? So I know that for all k greater or equal to k prime, k is bigger than beta v hk okay and here i have beta v of h of h of k right so if i substitute this year h of k well k is bigger than uh, k prime right because i want to show this condition for all k greater than k prime so this means that h of k is bigger than uh, k star, right? k is bigger than k star, so h of k is bigger than k star. So h of k satisfies this property, so I have that k, uh, h of k is bigger than beta v of h of h of k. Okay, so let me repeat again. So we assume that k is bigger than k star. We want to show that this is smaller than this, so I start with left-hand side, so I have this. This is equal to this, right? But bef because k is bigger than k star, I know that h of k is also bigger than k star, right? Because h is always bigger than, uh, h of k is bigger than k. So I know that h of k is bigger than k star. So if I plug in h of k instead of k here, I know that this inequality is satisfied. So h of k is, this should be weak inequality because v is 
uh, and the set B here, H of K is greater or equal to beta V H of H of K. So this here is smaller or equal to H uh, of K. Yes. Right? So if I take this and I can continue here, this is smaller or equal to beta h of k and then this is going to be smaller than h of k so this is equal to beta so there's a maximum missing here beta max of two of the same things so this is beta h of k and now if i look here k is bigger than k star so by assumption beta h of k is smaller than k so this is smaller than k, so I have shown that beta dv of h of k is strictly smaller than k, and then done. Okay, so the second proof was a bit more complicated, so we start with the function v here in this closed set. We want to map to this set here, so we can use, we have take a function v, so we can use this property here of this function. We want to show that for all k bigger than k star, this inequality is satisfied. So we start with this one, we equate it uh, to this one, and then we use this fact that V is in this set to show that this is smaller than H of K, and then we use this uh, property of the assumption here to show indeed that this is uh, true. So indeed it will be optimal to cut the tree if it's uh, big enough, but not if it's smaller than this uh, particular K star. Thanks for watching.